order. Pete Wishart. Thank you very much, Madam yeah, Speaker. Yeah. What an extraordinary and remarkable event the referendum was. Absolutely fantastic. And all of us, whether on the no side or the yes side, will never ever forget the last few months and what we went through. <laughs> it almost became a, a festival of politics towards the end. There was impromptu flash mobs. There was gatherings. There was get-togethers. It energised and engaged the Scottish people in a way that we never even foreseen or imagined. It was absolutely incredible, Madam Deputy Speaker. I just wish we could always do it again. <laughs> we probably now have the most engaged and educated population on political issues anywhere in Europe. People want to remain engaged. They're joining political parties. We've bucked the trend in this. There's over 80,000 people now in the Scottish National Party. We have trebled our membership since the referendum. The Greens have trebled their membership. And all the other parties that took part have also had massive yes. increases. I can't speak for the no parties. They'll be able to tell no you themselves I'm... what happened to their memberships. <laughs> but what has happened in the Yes movement is absolutely incredible. And there's so many people from Scotland today, because we are, because we are interested and want to be engaged with this, we'll be watching this debate today. Some of them will be watching this with horror. A lot of them will be appalled. We thought, and the Scottish people thought, the week we came back after the independence referendum, we would have the floor of the House to discuss these issues. But we thought we would have exclusive <coughs> attention of the House when it came to the referendum, the solemn vow, the solemn vow, the promise, the guarantee of more and extensive new power for Scotland. Surely that deserves a full day's debate without the consideration of any other issue. Now, I sympathise totally with English members. Of course they should have English votes for English laws. We don't, we, we don't vote on English-only issues. Now, there are several reasons we don't vote on English-only issues. First of all, because we respect the honourable members opposite. And they have every right to demand that they get exclusive rights to vote on English-only legislation. Secondly, it's a waste of my time. What's the point of me as a member of Perth and North Persia voting on policing arrangements in Peckham or Plymouth when that's handled by another parliament? So, of course, they should have this. But, no, I won't give away. Um, but, <laughs> very grateful to the Honourable Member for oh, Perth and North Persia. Um, those in Scotland will know that the SNP and the Yes campaign spoke about the fact that NHS policy in England, um, because of the block grant at any vote here, would impact the block grant to Scotland. So can you please tell me why that they were not voting on those policies in the past? Uh, and also, can you name any bill that has came through this Parliament in the last year that has not impacted on his constituents and mine? The Honourable Lady raises, raises a very, very important point. Now, when we talk about English only legislation, we talk about the English only legislation that doesn't impact on Scotland. Now, what I could do with the Honourable Lady, we, we discuss this every week in our group, I could give her our whip about the legislation which significantly impacts on Scotland. Now, we voted on tuition fees, for example, and if I'm answering the Honourable Lady's question, we voted on tuition fees because that had a massive impact on Scottish higher education. And it was right that we did that. It was right that we did that. But there are other issues which should not concern us one ice. One ice. Now, this House made one of the most important and solemn vows ever made by any member of Parliament, probably in modern political history, signed by the Prime Minister, signed by the Deputy Prime Minister, signed by the Leader of the Opposition. Well, I'll take the Honourable Gentleman, because an extra minute. I'm very glad that he's in danger of, of, of saying something which is not entirely in concert with the facts. He was suggesting that this vow, I think, was made by Parliament. It was not made by Parliament. Yeah. This, this, this is what it is all about. And I have to say to the Honourable Gentleman, I'm grateful for that intervention. Yeah, it's very helpful. Very because very helpful. what the Scottish people thought they had secured was a vow, a, vow. a solemn vow, a, vow. a promise, a guarantee oh, of a more promise. extensive it's powers. That is what they thought they had secured. And to hear my Conservative friends, some of them I respect dearly, confirming that they were not consulted, that they will have difficulty in getting this through this House, I think tells me everything 
about this. Now, the Scottish people were influenced, were influenced by the vow. With, there's some very good evidence to say it might have just swung it, because that was the key thing. The eve of the referendum, it was presented. Solemn vow. Promise. Guarantee of more powers. And already what we're hearing just now is the backtrack in full gear <coughs> when it comes to these issues. Now, the Prime Minister should have been the Prime Min- Madam Deputy Speaker, the Prime Minister should have been here. He should have been here. He should have been here. And I'll tell you why he should have been here. It's because he was the key signatory to that vow. He should have been here to speak to the Scottish people, to look them in the eye and say the vow, promise guaranteed, would be delivered in full, without condition with absolutely no caveat and without consideration of any other external issue. But we have not got him here today. It is a massive dereliction of duty. And before I move on from English votes for English laws, let me introduce you to the little brother, Skivel, Scottish votes for Scottish laws. Now, it's come to my attention that the Honourable Member, the only Conservative Member of Parliament, votes on English-only legislation. I don't know if they knew that, but he does. Maybe the whip should have a little quiet word so no possibility of a charge of hypocrisy will be extended to the Conservative Party. Tomorrow, five English members of Parliament are down to ask a question to the Scottish Secretary of State. Uh, Others will be looking to catch his eye. If it's good enough for English members of Parliament where we should absent ourselves from English owned the business, come on, Tory friends. Let's have, let us have. Let's make sure that the Scottish, Scottish members of Parliament have exclusive right to their legislation. We will also be having a package for more devolution. Are the Tory friends going to be voting on that? What's good for evil is equally good for skivel. And I hope our Conservative members of Parliament will remember about this too. Can I thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker, and the Leader of the House, and the Deputy, for replying so positively to my request for a full day's debate. It's only unfortunate that it's not become about the referendum and other things. It was an absolute and utter disgrace that we were left with one half-hour adjournment debate on a Thursday afternoon in the hands of the Right Honourable Member for Kirkcaldy and Cowdenbeath. And we have seen by his behaviour today his lack of generosity in debate. So I'm glad that we now have this. The Right Honourable Member, the Member for Kirkcaldy and Cowdenbeath, is now almost casting a surreal shadow and presence on this whole debate. Such is the ridiculous situation that he feels the need to secure a petition signed by 100,000 people to guarantee those more powers to be given to a government that he was speaking on behalf of. How absurd is that? Now, I think he came close today to saying he had been duped. Yes. I think he came close. We, we, all, we were almost, and I was hoping to push him into saying that he had felt he'd been duped by the Conservative government. We could have told him that. We could have told him that would happen. Madam Deputy Speaker, just because we lost the referendum narrowly does not mean I stopped believing in independence. Just because we didn't secure this referendum doesn't mean that I stopped believing that the people who are best placed to run our fantastic country are the people who live and work here. We now engage ourselves to the fight for more powers, and it's that that we will apply ourselves, and we will make sure that we get this maximum devolution that the Scottish people now want.